in the Scottish Cup. A long chase for Frank McDougall. Aiken was fouled. Well, Beckett sending it straight back where it came from. Province header. Fulton getting there before McGarvey. Now Nicholas. Good head flick down by McGarvey to Burns. That's cut out by Beckett. Celtic piling on the pressure and they've won a free kick just outside the box. A great piece of play involving McGarvey with a head flick to Burns and the cross cut out there by Alec Beckett. Surely averting goal number one. So a very dangerous situation. Tommy Burns, Mike Conroy, David Proven grouped around the ball. Robin takes it, and Billy Thompson saves the rebound from Nicholas. Great goalkeeping from Billy Thompson, showing real international ability. The driven free kick from Probity went full length to his right and then did an even harder job keeping out the return shot from Nicholas. So, St. Munn on the break. Conroy. Obstructing McDougall, in the opinion of the referee. There's the arm raised to signify an indirect free kick to St. Man. Taken quickly by Beckett to Stark. Here's Bone. Works that well with Stark. And that one flying just wide of goal. Well, Billy Stark took that very delicate return ball from Bone, stepped a few paces forward, and the left foot shot had Pat Bond at full stretch. He may well have had it covered, but in any event, a narrow escape for Celtic. Conroy with McGarvey dropping into a midfield position. For the moment, there's Sullivan making the forward run. No problem. Well, a good defending job by John Young. Took the steam out of that Celtic attack by stalling the approach of Proven and then getting in the important tackle. Abercrombie and Beckett on the posts. There's Roy Aiken, number six, on the six-yard line. Proven's corner kick. Aiken at the near post. And it's there! Well, Roy Aiken gives Celtic the lead. And that appeared to catch everyone by surprise. Just 12 minutes gone, 1-0 to Celtic. All coming from that flighted corner kick from David Proven. It came towards the near post. Roy Aiken came to meet it. Got up in front of the St. Man defence and the glancing header sneaking in at that near post. Well, no doubt some questions being asked in that St. Bun defence. Billy Thompson certainly looked completely surprised that that one could find its way in at that near post. But the perfect start for Celtic. And it may be there's more to come. Here's Proven. McGrain on the overlap. And a chance for Proven. Nicholas coming short. Say from Thompson coming from the head of John Young. Well, that really was a save of tremendous quality. The cross pulled back, Young at full stretch, deflecting the ball towards the far corner, and there's why Billy Thompson's in the Scottish international pool. The Green's header under the chest of Nicholas. Another good build up coming from Celtic. That ball from Conroy finding Sullivan. Could so easily have been the second goal. 
Sullivan missing the chance with the build up quite outstanding from midfield building right from the back McGrain forward to Nicholas working it back eventually the telling through ball from Conroy Sullivan made the attacking run and the shot just off target Nicholas going wide on the right John Young is number four Conroy and Barton's almost making something out of nothing and the magic of the footwork of Charlie Nicholas creating a chance is Conroy's missed kick and Barton's almost capitalised Peter Weir's cross and Bonner comes for it in determined fashion Well, Provenant, lots of help wide in his right, but the St. Martin defenders forcing him to go left. Sullivan to Nicholas. Well, that's the shooting part of Charlie Nicholas. The danger still not over. Frank McGarvey. Now Sullivan to Reed. Takes it back from Barnes. There's Sullivan. Well, another inspiring attack from Celtic. It was Nicholas that took the pass from Sullivan. The shot had tremendous power and was beaten wide by some excellent goalkeeping from Billy Thompson. Conroy to Proven. Well time tackled by Mark Fulton. Well, it's Bone, I think he was looking for, but. Bonner again commanding that Celtic goal mouth. McAdam and Burns working it clear. Burns takes it back from McGrain. Reed has a lot of space in the left, which Beckett is trying to close down. Oh, that's a giveaway to Frank McGarvey. That long crossfield pass to Reed was read by Beckett. They appear to have everything under control. He's played so well in the match so far. With a careless pass back picked up by McGarvey and with the St. Mun defence all at sea, McGarvey scores his 23rd of the season. McGarvey trying to turn past Young. Burns up, stayed wide all the time to, to provide that option. Cross! And goalkeeping again of the highest class by Billy Thompson. It was Burns who had the dangerous, looping out, swinging cross. McGarvey with the header. And Thompson saving at point blank range. Roy's driven pass, finding Proven. Rain being invited to switch the play by McAdam and obliging to find Mark Reed. Garvey surviving two challenges. Oh, 
atmosphere around the stadium. Frank McGarvey, two goals for Celtic. After that opening goal coming from Roy Aiken in 12 minutes, the glancing header from the corner kick. Then it was McGarvey taking a gift from that pass back from Alec Beckett, seven minutes of half time. And then the goal which has brought Celtic Park alive, right on the whistle. A tremendous first half performance from Celtic. A three goal lead. And what can we expect in the second half? Join us for that right after the break. So welcome back to the second half at Celtic Park. The ground has been buzzing throughout the interval after that great goal from Frank McGarvey just on the half-time whistle. And that certainly has posed enormous problems for St Man. No doubt suffering from the lack of three very experienced players, Copeland, Richardson and Sumner. And finding Celtic in absolutely inspiring form. Happily for them, their goalkeeper Billy Thompson was also in magnificent form in that first half. Otherwise, the Celtic lead could really be completely beyond redemption. This is Peter Weir. Reid finding Nicholas. This is what the Celtic forwards did so well in the first half, coming off their markers. But that challenge from Howard Crombie giving the ball back to St. Man. Conroy's challenge is judged fair by referee Alexander. McGrain takes it back from Proven. Well judged tackle from Fulton. McGrain to Sullivan. This is it for Nicholas. Charlie Nicholas makes it 4-0. Celtic have some anxiety here because Nicholas has taken a bad injury in the process of scoring but Celtic beginning exactly where they left off working up that right flank that's where so much of the danger came in the first half Proven and McGrain working it clear the pass to Sullivan breaking the square ball finding Nicholas in lots of space he took his time to play it behind Thompson and take that very late challenge just left him on the deck. Well, a very sad sight for Celtic. Charlie Nicholas carried off by his skipper, Danny McGrain. And I doubt very much if he'll take any further part in the action. Well, that confirms my view on that. George McCluskey ready to come on. Certainly no point whatsoever in Celtic taking any chances. Now with that four-goal lead... Just three minutes into the second half. Now Proven trying to go all the way himself. Now McGarvey. Just wide of the post. But offside was the decision in any event. And I wonder, in fact, if Frank McGarvey might have been penalised for pushing also. But the flag on the near side was up, and the free kick goes to St. Man. McGrain. Here's Young under pressure from McGarvey. Chance again for Frank McGarvey. That's the hat trick. Well, you couldn't find a happier man in the stadium. Frank McGarvey's hat trick against his old club. And again, a tribute to his. strength to withstand the challenge then the composure to go round the goalkeeper and stroke it home to make it 5-0 to Celtic he can play it forward that's Abercrombie beating Conroy being brought down for his trouble good early free kick to Spears got a very powerful left foot well Pat Bonner hasn't had a great deal to do this afternoon but what he has done he's done superbly
Sullivan has McGrain available on the near side. Coleman back in his familiar beat. Look at the close control. There's McGarvey and just squirming off the top of his head. Well, he's already had one hat trick this season way back at the start of the year in August in fact he's got one just now but four would be the first time he's managed it this season so a second Celtic substitution Mike Conroy, who's been such an important influence right in the heart of the midfield, goes off. And a warm welcome for Mother McLeod. Missed so much of the season since being injured way back in October. On to play the last 20 minutes. Free kick to St. Martin, Stark, fouled by McAdam. We are playing a short one to start. Bill Billy Stark. Bottoms to McGarvey. And there's the run from Sullivan. Thompson coming all the way. Oh, what a fine piece of goalkeeping. St. Mun defence stripped again. But Thompson acting as a supplementary sweeper coming out to clear the danger. And Jimmy Bourne letting fly from 25 yards or so. Oh, another careless pass back, giving McGarvey a chance to make it four. And Thompson doing enough to turn it wide. A corner kick. But really, this is one defence. Looking as though they have a death wish. Give away again to McGarvey. Once again, Thompson to the rescue. Collins corner kick. Headed in by McAdam. Away by Stark. Tommy Burns. Just beyond McCluskey. Now there's Logan taking this pass from Bone. Trying to leave Tommy Burns. The pass going behind Fulton. It made a long run from deep. Now Fulton's out of position. Corbin going all the way. He's got McGarvey ahead. Well, he sat there as determined to get his fourth goal. Taking that pass. Letting go first time beyond Thompson's right hand and beyond the far post. This is Bone. Stark making the break on the right. Logan's in the box, so is Spears. Lakin taking no chances. And John McCormack coming right into the box. He is arriving on the goal line. Bonner missing out again. And that one goes wide also. Jimmy Bone. All these corners in the last few minutes causing the Celtic defence a lot of trouble. Pat Bonner coming and missing on two occasions. And that time Jimmy Bone really might have done better. Aiken. Impeded there by Magaviti. Sullivan back to McGrain. McAdam up to join in the attacking act. This is McCluskey. And that's goal number six. Well, there's Billy Thompson. What an afternoon has been for him. Some tremendous save. Taking that, the 
intrusion of McAdam into midfield, causing the additional problem for St. Burton. Eventually it came to McCluskey, cut inside with a lot of pace, and that finishing shot leaving Thompson stranded. McCluskey's ninth goal of the season, and the sixth goal that the Celtic supporters were asking for just a few moments ago. And still trying to come forward. Here's Jimmy Bourne with a chance for the consolation. Well, it's been that kind of day for St. Martin. Coming straight back off the post with Bonner beaten. Now Logan trying to get the ball past Reed. Winning the corner kick. to St Mun and I'm sure the final whistle will come as welcome relief to them into the final minute here's Proven Sullivan bursting forward on his outside and the pass just catching him with the wrong foot Getting through to Aiken. Still Roy Aiken. McCluskey. To Barnes. Running into trouble. Well, that layoff just a little bit too neat from Logan. Still McGrain. Bond's in a forward position. Well, it really is a jamboree. John McCluskey's second goal. Well, once again, the build-up from Celtic. Opening up the St. Bond defence, leaving it in tatters and giving McCluskey a chance to show the power of his right foot finishing. Poor old Billy Thompson. They drag out figure and again the final whistle reaching a goal as did the half-time whistle. Seven goals to nil. Celtic 